What is going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content that we have coming out. With this video, we are jumping into Justice League Road to Dark Crisis. This is going to be setting the groundwork and letting us know where our heroes lie after the death of the Justice League. There's about four or five stories in here following different characters. These stories having a lot of notable names attached to them, such as Joshua Williamson, Jeremy Adams, Chuck Brown, Philip Kennedy Johnson, and Stephanie Phillips. And if you're not really sure what is going on, be sure to check out all of the links in my description as well as the top of this video. I have playlists set up for the Infinite Frontier, everything that has been going on with the good majority of DC Comics. The Infinite Frontier is definitely necessary reading, as well as Justice League Incarnate. And obviously, Death of the Justice League, Justice League issue number 75, is extremely vital to the story moving forward. But this is the beginning to our dark crisis. Be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in Gotham City. We have the one, the only, Dick Grayson aka Nightwing. This story is taking place after the death of the Justice League, but before they have this ceremony saying goodbye to our heroes. Word has spread very quickly that the Justice League is gone. Every 2-bit criminal is coming out of the woodworks. Nightwing currently facing off against Brick, quickly being interrupted and taken care of because Superboy comes swooping in. And Jonathan Kent, he has come here to try to get some kind of counsel. He's freaking out a little bit. They all heard what Black Adam said. The Justice League is dead. Dick tells him that he needs a slowdown. He's going just a little bit too fast. The truth is, Superman, the Justice League, many of the members, they have all died at some point in time, and we have always seen them come back. Thinking back to Superman's funeral, he remembers Batman being very steady in his emotions, not showing them to anybody, not showing the concern on his face that the world just lost Superman. He was worried that showing any fear, it would scare all of the other individuals. Then a few months later, Superman returned, when Bruce had died. At first, he thought this was some kind of trick. After realizing Bruce wasn't coming back, he put on the Batsuit. Superman was even a little upset that he did this so quickly, but after a little time he learned exactly why Dick Grayson did this. And then Bruce came back. Barry Allen, the Flash, was gone for a very long time, and his death, it greatly impacted Wally West's life even more so upon his return. What he is telling Jonathan is to not necessarily worry about death, but to have hope. These heroes have been gone before, and we have seen them return to us until we know for 100% certainty that the Justice League is in fact dead. They have to hold on to that remaining hope, believe that they are still alive, and that they will be returned to them. Even with this reassurance, he's letting it know that Young Justice, all of the younger heroes, the ones that have never had to see the heroes die, that don't understand things like Dick because of his experience, there is still a lot of concern, a lot of worry. There is already talk of putting putting up statues and having a vigil. Jonathan has come to ask if Dick Grayson will come say a few words. And this is where Nightwing, he gets a little bit heated because part of him is still in denial that they are gone. He believes that they are all overreacting. He believes that there is no reason to do this because they're gonna come back. We don't need to start a new Justice League. We don't have to do any of that. We just need to hold the line until they return. Jonathan has to ask the question though. What if they don't? Not everybody comes back. We have seen that with Alfred Pennyworth and there has been talk of a dark army headed directly for them. Jonathan doesn't believe that they need to go on pretending like the Justice League is going to come back. He thinks that they need to prepare for whatever is about to come. While they are having their lunch, they are interrupted by Kid Omezo having some Amazo proto 
types. Nightwing was expecting this to happen, having Superboy here is just an added bonus to take him down quicker. But Dick does realize that he is acting a lot like Batman, hiding his emotions denying the fact that the Justice League is gone and they have to do something. At the very least, give reassurance to the rising heroes, to the young heroes that are out there needing some kind of guidance. Dick Grayson is stepping up and being the voice for the next generation of heroes, the next leader to lead them into the Dark Crisis. That's what takes us over to Central City, picking up with Wally, Wallace West, Iris, and Linda. And they are telling Wally and Wallace about how Barry Allen, he has been gone for months now. Nobody having any idea where he is. Not only that, Avery is missing as well. She had been working with Justice League Incarnate. Now that the Justice League is also gone, Wally can tell that everybody is on edge. Everybody is a little bit worried. He knows how paralyzing fear can be. Reassuring everybody that they will find Avery, they will find Barry Allen, and they will figure out what happened to the Justice League. He grabs Wallace and they head out the door. Wally knows exactly what is in store for them. When they thought Barry Allen had died, every criminal crawled out of their hole. He did everything he could for months, making his way from Keystone to Central City, making sure that everybody knew there was still a flash around. That's exactly what they intend to do. Giganta on the loose trying to rob a bank, having all kinds of stuff around the city that only the Flash can take care of. The two of them zipping from one problem to the other. What Wally is really trying to do is get Wallace's mind off of everything going on. Every time Wally cracks a little joke or something of that nature, he is trying to make Wallace smile, trying to remind him that there is still hope out there. While things look rough, while there is going to be much struggle ahead, hope is the one thing that is going to help them push forward. As they break off in the opposite direction to go take care of things, Wally stops by the Flash Museum, because while he has to be this beacon of hope, that doesn't mean he can't take moments to really worry about what comes next. Whether they died, disappeared, or whatever the case is, they are gone now. And Wally feels it in his heart, in his very soul, a constant reminder to live with a purpose, to give the people a hero that they can count on. That's what takes us to Sector 2814. We have Hal Jordan Green Lantern. The Green Lanterns recently all getting their abilities, their powers back. Jon Stewart becoming essentially god level. He gave life to the Green Lantern Corps yet again. And while the Justice League had been taken away, Hal Jordan remained behind. Unaware of what has happened, he is taking care of things in space. Currently on a trajectory chasing down an interplanetary creature. It is taking him directly to Earth. Trying to stop this thing before it can reach the oceans of Earth. He is calling in to anybody in the Justice League. But none of them answer. Unable to stop it in time. It plunges into the deep blue. This is where the metamorphosis begins. It starts to multiply. To spread out. And it is growing in numbers having its eyes directly on Atlantis. This is where we see the arrival of Aqualad, aka Jackson Hyde, jumping right into the fight, not really understanding what he's getting himself into. These predators, they circle around him and they begin taking chunks out of his skin. This is where we see Hal Jordan coming in to save the day, putting a force field around them, giving them an opportunity to have a conversation. This is the first time that Jackson and Hal have actually met one another in person. And so they get the introductions out of the way. And he lets them know that they need Aquaman. Why isn't the Justice League responding to any of their distress calls? Quickly recognizing that he hasn't heard the news, Jackson breaks it to him. And while this does shock him, their concern is on this creature, a type of symbiote. They eradicate all life that they land on, starting from the oceans and moving outward. They quickly recognize that these things are controlled. There is a parasite on them. Jackson Hyde, using his abilities, the Green Lantern using his power. The two of them are able to separate the parasite from this creature. In doing so, the creature is free. 
all of the duplicates fade away. And for today, the day has been saved as Hal Jordan escorts this creature back into space. He vows that he will find out what happened to the Justice League and lets Jackson know that him and the younger heroes, they're gonna need to step it up. This is when we are taken over to the fall of the Justice League. We are given an old withered man. This is Pariah. Pariah is living his days out, repeating the same thing over and over and over again, believing that he was going to save everything. He only caused destruction. This is his penance. And while he does understand that there is some bastardized form of the multiverse that is in existence now, he has to stay out of it completely, believing that if he touches anything, it could bring down this whole new multiverse. Even if he believes this to be the false multiverse, he will not be the destroyer of everything yet again. You see the ones that he loved. They try to convince him to build the machine. Their eyes as black as night. Pariah doesn't know it yet, but this is the great darkness. This is the moment the great darkness influenced the Pariah to do what he does. He is being an instrument of this darkness, putting all of the pieces into play in preparation for the darkness' arrival. The Great Darkness has manipulated and twisted Pariah, making him believe the only way to save the multiverse is if he builds his machine. This is where it all began. This is where the Dark Crisis was born. Taking us to Gotham City, we pick up with Nocturna. Her and Batman have had a lot of back and forth throughout the years. Now that he is gone, everything is up for grabs and nobody should be able to stop her. At least this is what she is believing. As she goes in to steal whatever she wants, this city still has its nights. Spoiler arriving on scene asking her, what the heck are you doing? And though the two of them, they begin to throw blows. By the end of this fight, they're really just having a conversation. Batman's absence, it is felt throughout the entire city, for better or for worse. And right now, Stephanie is struggling, feeling like this city just has a black hole. There is an emptiness that just can't be filled. The two of them really having a great moment here. She has to take off Oracle calling her off to a new mission. Telling Nocturna not to steal anything, we see somebody up on the rooftop. This is Firefly. Now that Batman and the Justice League are gone, we have a new organization on the horizon. Finally able to get some footing, the Secret Society are offering her a place at the table. And they have plans much, much bigger than Gotham. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. No, I'm not going to say that this was absolutely amazing. It was really just letting us know where our heroes are currently. How they're dealing with all of this going on. We get a little bit of insight of when the Great Darkness was able to take over Pariah. In terms of letting us know what we're going to be expecting, they definitely didn't give us much information. Which is definitely unfortunate, but we should be getting Dark Crisis, the first issue, here relatively soon. You know, and like I've said before, I am relatively excited for this. We're getting the younger generation the opportunity to take up the mantle, at least for a little bit. We all know the Justice League, they're not going to stay dead. And we can't even say that they are dead because we know that they're not. We know that they have just been bleeped somewhere else. And so while the return may be inevitable, we're going to get a couple of months here where the young generation really gets their chance to shine. But what I also like about this is that we're still going to get stories continuing on. From Batman to Superman, we're going to have Clark still on War World. And so while Dark Crisis is happening, we're still getting a lot of our main Justice League heroes and a lot of their stories. When it comes to the timeline, most of the stories are going to predate the death of the Justice League. Once Dark Crisis is out of the way, we'll see the solo lines start to catch up, move past the time that they died, and pick up with current whatever is going on after Dark Crisis. So if you're concerned that you're not going to get your Clark Kent or Bruce Wayne or any of those characters, we are still going to see them prominently in their roles. All except for Barry Allen, of course. Wally West has been the one with the flashline for quite some time now, ever really since the Infinite Frontier kicked off. 
But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.